Yo, so my bad for not uploading the last couple of days. Uh, I've had pneumonia for the last like three weeks, which is uh, pretty garbage. I can't lie. I definitely don't recommend it. It sucks. Uh, I was making videos throughout all of it, but the last like week, it started to flare up a little bit, get a little bit worse. So I had to like take some days and just chill and like wait until I felt good enough to make a video, which is right now. So I'm making one. Hello. But yeah, it's not gone yet completely. So hopefully in the next few days, I'll be back to uh, 100%. But today's story, it's a good one. I came back with a good one, a long one, uh, one that I've been waiting to tell for quite a while now, and I've just been saving for a special occasion. And it's not really a special occasion. It's August 2nd, 6.28 in the morning when I'm recording this. I've not slept yet. Uh, I guess the special occasion is I uh, don't feel like complete ass right this moment, so I'm going to make a video. But today's story time is kind of a bunch of stories in one. Uh, it's, it's just ridiculous. So I hope you enjoy it. Leave a like on the video if you do, and let's just get into it. So, today's video slash story all starts off back in the year of 2017. Now, 2017 was a special year for me. 2017 was the year I was supposed to graduate. Now, I'm sure you all know this, but I did not graduate high school. Uh, I quit a couple years early. Don't be like me, stay in school, kids. But yeah, I quit school a couple years early. Uh, but the thing about 2017 was that was the year I was supposed to graduate, which means all my friends from high school graduated that year. So they got that freedom that I had had for a couple years. So like I was finally able to share that freedom with my friends because they graduated and we were all done with school together now. Now in 2017, I was actually living out in LA at this time, uh, but I was going back home a lot to New York, my hometown. Uh, and I would do this thing where like I go to LA for a month and I come back to New York for a month and I would just kind of cycle. So this was during one of those months where I was in my hometown in New York and me and all my hometown homies, some from my school, some from other schools, just people I knew from my hometown that just graduated, just like all my best friends, we were definitely wreaking havoc a little bit, okay? Like I was home for the month, we were definitely partying a little more than we probably should have been, but like we were all young, fresh out of high school, just living it up before everybody went off to college, and it was fun, I can't lie. Definitely some very fond, beautiful memories were made that month, and that year. But yeah, this story isn't such a happy memory. Kinda is, kinda not. But... Yeah, anyway, this all starts off in the year of 2017. It was a regular evening. I woke up very late in the day. I had just flown back from LA like two days prior, so my sleep schedule was pretty messed up. Um, I was still like on California time. So yeah, your boy, once he got to New York, I was definitely going to sleep a little bit late in the day. I'd be going to bed at like 7 a.m., waking up at like 4 p.m. It was not very good. But anyway, yeah, I woke up very late in the day. It was probably like 3 or 4 p.m. I wanted to do something. I was bored. I didn't want to be in my house all day. Uh, so I texted some friends of mine that were all just, you know, had nothing to do and didn't have jobs or college at the time. So I just texted all those homies and I was like, yo, what are you up to? Yo, what are you up to? Just texted all of them at once. Right. And I'd say like 90% or maybe 95% of them texted back and were like, yeah, dude, let's do something. So I replied to all of them. And I was like, Hey, so I didn't only text you. I also texted like everybody else. How about we all meet up? And they were all down for that. And yeah, like 30 minutes later, my one homie pulled up, then another one pulled up. And before I knew it, I had like six people at my house. And after everybody got to my house, we didn't really know what we wanted to do. Like, I didn't have any idea in mind, neither did anybody else. Um, so we were just kind of like bouncing ideas back and forth. Like my one homie was like, yo, we should go play laser tag. And me being like, you know, 18 at this point and being like, oh, I'm an adult now and I'm so cool. I was just like, yeah, dude, laser tag. That'd be dope if I was like 10 years old. I said some bullshit like that. And looking back, I'm like, dude, what a lame thing to say. Like, you are never too cool for laser tag. And even my friend said that. He was like, dude, come on. You're never too cool for laser tag. And I was like, bro, nah, no laser tag today. Maybe another day. And then we start spitballing other ideas. My one homie wanted to go explore some abandoned hospital, but we'd already been there before. And like, we really didn't want to do that. So like, we end up just kind of keep throwing ideas around. And eventually, like 30 minutes later, my one homie, we'll just call this homie uh, Alex. Alex has this idea. He's like, yo, so what if we go and we get some acid and then we take the acid and then we go to the drive-in movie theater and we watch the scariest movie that we could find? And I don't know why at the time that sounded like such a fun thing to do, because I'm looking back now and I'm like, dude, that sounds terrifying. But for some reason, 18 year old me was so on board with it. I was like, dude, yes, that is what we got to be doing. And for some reason, all my friends were too, like everyone wanted to do it. And like, if he said something like, oh, like, let's take acid and then go like watch some like crazy psychedelic movie, I'd be like, okay. Or like, let's go listen to some cool album. I'd be like, okay, but no, take acid and go see the scariest movie 
at the drive-in theater, which by the way, the drive-in theater was surrounded by woods and you always just heard creepy noises anyway. So it, it was a recipe for disaster in my opinion, but I was on board with it. So fast forward like an hour or two later, we all jumped into my homie's car. He had this like old Toyota RAV4 SUV and it literally didn't even fit all of us because there was like six of us. So we had one person in the trunk area, like the back SUV trunk. We had three people in the back seat and then two in the front. And we're all just like bumping music on the way to this plugs house to buy some acid. And like, I hadn't done acid in a long time. So I can't lie at this point, the anxiety was kind of starting to set in a little bit. And I was like, oh shit, is this really going to be a good idea? Like, oh no, like I'm having second thoughts here and I'm kind of starting to second guess it, right? So I propose a plan B in case, you know, this horror movie thing starts to go south. I was like, yo guys, and they're all like, what's up? And I was like, if this horror movie shit starts making us have a bad trip, we should like, I don't know, go do something else. Like, I don't know, we could walk to somewhere nearby or like maybe go see another movie at another theater. And my homie who was driving, he was like, nah, I don't really want to do that. I'm not trying to drive while I'm tripping. And I was like, that's very fair. I don't think you should either. But like, maybe we could walk somewhere nearby. And then Alex chimes in and he's like, dude, fuck plan B. We're just going to commit. And if we have a bad trip, we all have a bad trip. I was like, Alex, do you not understand that we're going to be at a drive-in theater where like there's other people, like probably families and stuff around, like... Imagine if you were at a movie theater and you saw six people in the front row, like, tripping balls and screaming while they ripped their hair out or something because they're having a bad trip. And he goes, dude, I think that's fucking awesome. And I'm like, I hate you because he's just a troll. He was just trying to troll me. So, yeah, we didn't have a plan B. We were all just committing to this. So we got to the plugs house. We bought all the tabs. And before we knew it, we were on the way to the drive-in theater. We got there at about, I think, 7 p.m. or something. Maybe it was 8. It was kind of towards when the sun was starting to set. Uh, we pulled up in a nice little spot towards the front. After that, we all took a tab and then we all got out of my homie's car and we just cranked the radio up so we could hear the movie. And we just kind of like laid there in the grass and just like started to watch this movie. Now I looked up the movie that we were watching's length and it was a two and a half hour movie. So for half the movie, I probably wouldn't be tripping. And for the other half, I would probably start to trip pretty hard. So that actually made me feel pretty good because it means that I'm not going to be tripping balls for the entire horror movie. So that made me feel a little relieved. So the first half of the movie, it really wasn't that crazy. It, it was actually not that scary at all. But then the acid started to kick in and I started to like feel a little something, something. Now, the good news is uh, I didn't take enough of that stuff to make me like super trip out. I was just having some slight visuals, slight movement, slight patterns kind of thing. Uh, I was hearing things here and there, but I think that was just the woods nearby and like me kind of tripping myself out. Uh, so maybe they were real. Maybe they weren't. I don't know. But I can't lie, I can report that watching a completely terrifying horror movie while you're tripping on acid is not the best idea, because when that acid kicked in and I was actually finally starting to feel it, the movie definitely got a lot scarier. I don't know if the movie itself just genuinely got scarier in the second half, or if like the acid was making it more scary, but it wasn't, it wasn't good. I was definitely being a pussy, okay? I definitely closed my eyes for a couple of the jump scares, and it was, a, it was a little bit much, okay? So, after this... The movie's over, right? I'm still tripping. My friends are still tripping. And we're kind of fucked because we don't really have anywhere to go. And my friend doesn't want to drive, which I completely respect. I don't think you should drive on psychedelics ever because they make you see things. So we're just in this field after the movie's over. Half of us are shitting our pants because the movie just ended and it was really scary. And now we're in a dark forest, like pretty much. And the other half of us are like not phased at all. Like Alex and a couple other homies, they didn't give a fuck about the movie. They were not scared at all. Uh, I was kind of in the middle. I was definitely a little scared, but not like terrified like some of my friends were. So yeah, we're trying to figure out something to do, right? And my friend doesn't want to drive. So we end up deciding to ditch his car in the field at the drive-in movie theater and just like go to one of the nearby corner stores, like 7-Eleven or something, buy some drinks, some snacks, walk around for a little bit, get our legs moving, and then we'll come back to the car and just chill there until the trip dies down and then we can go and drive home, right? That was the plan. Well, we didn't really take into account how long this acid was going to last for. Uh, you know, we thought it'd be like all the other times we tripped where it'd just be a few hours. And, you know, like after that, we'd be okay. But something about this acid, man, it just lasted a little bit longer than what we were used to. All of my friends and me included were tripping for like five straight hours. Now, don't get me wrong. We weren't like peak tripping the whole five hours, but like, it was just taking a long time to like wear off. 
usually like within that time frame, it wears off to the point where we feel like almost normal again, but this was like pretty strong. So we end up walking to a 7-Eleven, we get drinks and some snacks, we end up sitting there on one of the benches outside for like, I don't know, maybe an hour, hour and a half, and then we ended up walking around the town for a little bit, we probably walked around for like two straight hours, and then after that, we went to a food spot nearby, like a 24-hour diner, and we ate there, even though we weren't even hungry, we just wanted to kill time, and finally, after that, my friend felt good, and like, he felt okay, and it had worn off at that point, so we went back to the car. And we walked all the way back to the movie theater, the drive-in theater. We walked into like the little field area where we parked. And at this point, our car was the only one left in the field. We saw the last movie of the night. So after everyone left, it was just our car there the whole night by itself. So as we got closer and closer to the car, I noticed something. I saw that the back window looked shattered. Like it looked see-through, if that makes sense. Like the window wasn't there anymore. And I was like, huh. Eh, the window's probably there. I'm probably just seeing like an optical illusion or something. Probably just the acid talking, right? And then as we get closer, I hear my friend, the one that drove, go, yo, is my fucking window blown out? And then I was like, oh shit, okay, so we're both seeing that. And we approach the car and the back window is completely shattered. And his car is just completely ransacked. Like everything is missing and like the glove compartment's open. There's papers all over the floor. Everything's missing, bro. Someone stole my hoodie, which pissed me off because I just got that hoodie and I really liked it. A couple of my other friends' hoodies got stolen. And then Alex, when he was looking around the car, he goes, oh, fuck. And I was like, what? What's up? He's like, bro, my phone got stolen. I was like, you left your phone in the car this whole time? He's like, yeah, dude, I just thought we'd be coming back sooner. So I left it in here to charge. And I was like, fuck. And I was like, wait, do you have find my iPhone? He's like, yeah. I was like, here, here's my phone. Type in your info, like sign in to find my iPhone and let me know where it pings. So he signed in and we were able to track his phone's location. And it was in a house, like literally two minute walk down the road. If I had to guess, it was probably one of the movie theater employees that like saw that our car was there after hours and just like hit a quick lick or some shit, right? So at this point, we have a couple choices here, okay? We take our L, we cut our losses, we move forward my buddy gets his window fixed and we write it off as us getting robbed. Or option two, we go and investigate the house that has Alex's phone, aka the house of the person that robbed us, and we get our shit back. Now, before I continue with the story, I just gotta say, if you're ever in a situation like this one, just call the fucking cops, dude. We could have just called the cops and probably had them go to the house and get our stuff back or like something, right? But us just being like stupid teenagers and just being super angry at the fact we got robbed, we wanted to handle it ourselves, which is a huge recipe for disaster. So yeah, try not to do that. But yeah, back to the story. That was the plan. We were going to go and essentially investigate where Alex's phone was located on the map. So that's what we did. We started walking to the location because like I said, it was like a two minute walk. And before we knew it, we were in front of this one house. And where this movie theater was, was kind of towards the country a little bit. So, like, there wasn't very close neighboring houses. All of the houses had a good bit of land between them. So this location that the uh, Find My iPhone took us to was just one house. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like it was an apartment complex or, like, a bunch of houses on a street and we didn't know which house it was. Like, this house was for sure the house of the person that just robbed us. So now we're, like, wondering what to do, right? We're like, all right, what are we going to do here? Like, do we call the cops here? Do we, like, break into their car and get payback? Do we knock on their door? And Alex goes, I'm going to knock on the fucking door. And I was like, okay. He's like, yeah, bro, it's my phone. Like, I'm getting that shit back. So he walks up to the front door. He knocks on it. And this, like, teenage girl answers the door, right? And I immediately recognize her. It's one of the employees that was helping sell snacks at the drive-in theater. And me and all my friends kind of look at each other immediately because we realize, like, oh, shit, this is one of the employees from the theater. Like, she probably stole the phone, right? And Alex goes, hey, my name's Alex. These are all my friends. We were just at the movie theater you work at. Uh, we left our car there for quite a while and it got broken into and my phone in the car was stolen and whoever stole it was stupid and didn't take the SIM card out or turn it off or anything and we could just track it and it's tracking to right here, your house. So if you could, please kindly return my phone so I don't have to call the cops. And this girl is like looking very scared. She's like definitely scared shitless. And she goes, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know anything about that. Like, I didn't take your phone. And Alex goes, okay, if you didn't take it, somebody in your house did. So 
just please ask them to give me my phone back. And Alex was being super nice to this girl. Like, I think if it was a guy that answered the door and he was like our age or even older, I think Alex would have been a lot more of a dick to them and probably tried to like fight them or something. But because it was a girl and like she looked scared, he didn't want to like press her that hard. He just wanted his phone back, right? So this girl keeps responding by saying she didn't know who took it and like she didn't take it and like the phone pinging must be wrong. It must be the neighbor's house. Like she just keeps lying to us, right? And all of a sudden we hear this guy's voice in the background behind her. I hear, who's at the door, honey? And this guy comes walking up and he's like probably 45 years old and it was definitely her dad. And he comes up to the door and he goes, can I help you gentlemen? And then Alex gets a little bit of a different change in his voice. He's like, yeah, uh, so your daughter or you, I don't know who, someone in this house took my phone. It's pinging to this house. Like, I just want my fucking phone back. Please give me my phone back. And her dad ends up getting real defensive. He's like, don't you fucking say my daughter's a thief. And don't you dare call me a thief. We're the only two people that live in this house. And we didn't take your fucking phone. So how about you get off my property now? And then Alex kind of matches his energy. He's like, how about I call the fucking cops? And get you both arrested for stealing my shit. And the dad's like, you can't do shit. You have no evidence, blah, 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 blah. And while they're arguing, I decide to try something. I pull open my phone and I go to my contacts. And I start calling Alex's phone just to see. Because they clearly didn't take the SIM card out. They clearly didn't shut the phone off. We were tracking it. I feel like it was on and I feel like we would hear it. So I decided to try dialing it. And as soon as I dial it, we start to hear Alex's ringtone go off right in front of us. It's literally in the girl's front pocket. And it was definitely Alex's phone because he had Chief Keef don't like as his ringtone. And that's what we heard. And Alex goes, I fucking knew it. You have my phone. Give it to me or I'm calling the fucking cops for you breaking into our car. And without hesitation, this girl takes the phone out and hands it to Alex. And her dad kind of looked at us with like this, oh shit, I was wrong kind of look. And immediately he starts apologizing. He's like, I'm so sorry for what she did. Like, what's the damage look like on your car? Like, please show me. And he walked back to the movie theater with us and like checked it out with us and saw that, you know, the whole window was broken. And this dude, being the good dude that he was, walked us back to his house, got his checkbook and wrote Alex a check for like a thousand dollars to replace his window. I don't even think the window replacement cost that much. He told him keep whatever was left. He also said he was calling his daughter's boss first thing in the morning to get her fired from her movie job because she can't be trusted around cars at night. So yeah, crazy. But yeah, this dad ended up being super, super chill. Like we ended up talking to him for like 20 minutes afterwards. He was telling us about how like he's a single father and he's been raising two kids and how one of them just moved out and now it's just him and his daughter and she's kind of a problem child. And we ended up just talking about a bunch of stuff for a little bit. And in the end, he thanked us for cutting her some slack because she was only 17 and like She was still learning her way, essentially. So he was thanking us for not calling the cops on her, right? And we were like, yeah, no problem. Like, no big deal. And after we got done talking to him, he was like, why'd you guys leave your car in the movie theater grass for so long? Like, what's up with that? And Alex just told him the truth. He goes, oh, we were tripping acid. We didn't want to drive. And he goes, oh, yeah, I remember doing that when I was a kid. And this guy was just super chill. He told us a story about how he first took acid and, like, how it went. And, yeah, we essentially, like, made friends like with her dad. It was just so crazy. Very weird turn of events. But after that, we ended up driving back to my homie's house, got there, kicked it there for like an hour or two. And then after that, I ended up Ubering home and just hanging out at my house for the rest of the night and just chilled. And yeah, we ended up going back to that movie theater like two weeks later, that drive-in theater, and that girl was not there. So I think the dad probably got her fired. But yeah, guys, that is the story of how I tripped balls with my homies at a horror movie and then got robbed And they made friends with the girl's father who robbed us. Yeah. Moral of the story is, guys, just don't be doing any of the shit I'm talking about in these videos. That's really the moral here. And don't steal from people either. But yeah, guys, that is the end of the story time. I hope you all enjoyed it. I certainly enjoyed telling it. Leave a like on the video if you want more stuff like this. Feel free to leave your story time in the comments down below. And subscribe if you're new. I will see you all later. Peace. I'm not fist. I heard that song you dropped to cap and now I'm